You've probably seen before when you walk into a Whole Foods grocery store and you look at the salad bar that there's expeller pressed canola oil on just about everything. Now, I used to raise question on this simply because from a metabolic standpoint, I always wondered why they had to put some fat on everything. I didn't understand. It added calories, it added fat to carbs, it just didn't make sense. Even if you're going to Whole Foods and you wanted to get some rice, it would almost always say that there was expeller pressed canola oil on the rice. And of course, if we look at it from the metabolic standpoint, you should never be mixing fats and carbs. That's just not a good thing to do. But it goes a lot deeper than the metabolic side of things. I wanna do a deep dive into why Whole Foods is using this canola oil and why we really need to be trepidatious. But I do wanna first off say that, yeah, I shop at Whole Foods from time to time and I eat at the salad bars when I'm traveling. It doesn't mean that you should avoid it at all costs, but it's important that you know exactly what's going on and why Whole Foods does this. Because quite honestly, it's not a good thing at all. So the reason that Whole Foods puts canola oil on their food, particularly in their salad bars and in their baked goods, is because it preserves the shelf life of the food. So if you're talking about putting it on something that's in a salad bar like rice or anything like that, it's going to allow that rice to sit at the salad bar a little bit longer before ever having an issue. And it's not just because it's encapsulating it in fat. It does this because canola oil is a trans fat. And if you've seen my other videos, you know how I talk about trans fats. Trans fats are fats that have been artificially turned into partially saturated fats so that they don't oxidize, so that they last longer when they're on the shelf, and in this case, in a salad bar. So it makes sense in theory, right? Whole Foods is trying to make it so that their profit margins are a little bit better by being able to leave food out on the shelves a little bit longer, or in this case, in the salad bar. It makes it so they don't have to rotate their stock as much, they can leave food out there for the day, and then sometimes they can even leave it in the back overnight and put it back out in the morning. I've definitely seen them do that. The same asparagus that's sitting out there at night somehow magically ends up there in the morning. Personally, I've seen that. So it ends up raising the question in the first place of how fresh is Whole Foods really? But that's not what I really want to talk about today. I want to talk about canola oil. So let's do a deep dive into canola oil right now. First off, we have to know that canola oil is a trans fat. Whether you like it or not, trans fat isn't just always this crazy looking artificial saturated fat. Trans fats appear in all kinds of things. And when restaurants are cooking with canola oil, they're adding trans fats in. So when Whole Foods is adding trans fats and canola oil into the food that's at the salad bar, we're running into the same situation. And we have to remember why trans fats are created. Trans fats are created, again, to preserve that freshness. That's why peanut butter looks the way it does. Okay, when you're buying low quality peanut butter that doesn't naturally separate, there's usually hydrogenation involved. So again, Whole Foods is doing this to the salad bar. But we have to look now at where canola oil comes from. See, canola oil comes from a seed called the rape seed. Now this is a very, very common seed that 93% of which comes from a GMO form. So whether it's GMO or non-GMO is actually aside the point though, because what we really have to focus on is the fact that rapeseed oil is exceptionally toxic. Rapeseed oil is not something that really is consumable, okay? It's not edible. Our bodies don't break it down. In fact, it actually contains anti-nutrients in it to begin with so that our bodies don't process rapeseed oil. So if we were to consume straight up rapeseed oil that hasn't been processed into canola oil, our bodies would either get very sick because it's toxic or our bodies would reject it entirely because it has naturally occurring anti-nutrients to protect us. So that's pretty powerful right then and there. So then what ends up happening is this rapeseed oil is manufactured through multiple different processes to ultimately come down to canola oil. And there's a couple of reasons that they do it. They create it so that it can be more stable, so it can be added to products to increase shelf life, but they also denature the heck out of it so we can cook at higher temperature with it so that restaurants can use it. So then it comes back to the fact that Whole Foods is putting this on everything, and then they're coming around and saying, well, we use non-GMO rape seeds when we make our canola oil. So our canola oil is non-GMO. Well, for once, I'm actually saying it doesn't matter in this case. GMO is bad, we know that, and I'll go on record by saying that, and there are studies that are starting to show that. But the fact is, in this case, the fact that it's GMO or non-GMO is completely negligible. Like, it's such a small scale by the greater thing that is superseding and overshadowing that, and that's the fact that it's rapeseed, and rapeseed is toxic, and rapeseed is manufactured up the whiz out whether it's GMO or not. So we don't want to be consuming this stuff all the time. And here's what ends up happening. Here's what's actually in that canola oil you're consuming. You see, once you start the processing of this rapeseed oil, again, whether it's GMO or not, you're adding a lot of different solvents into it. So we're talking solvents like hexane. Hexane is derivative of gasoline vapor, just to give you an idea. And a lot of times we end up finding the hexane in remnants of the canola oil to begin with, even after it's been cooked. 
So we have a lot of toxins that are involved just through the solvent phase of this. Then of course we have all kinds of different breakdowns. We have to deodorize it, we have to do other things, we have to denature it more and more to make it more stable. And through that process, we're adding more chemicals, but we're also adding things that strip any potential small amounts of nutrients that could be in the canola oil to begin with. In fact, the deodorization process of canola oil, of actually getting rid of the odor of the rapeseed in the first place, strips almost all the omega-3s out of it. So when we don't have the omega-3s, we're left with an inflammatory omega-6, which in and of itself is bad. But then we're left with an omega-6 that not only is inflammatory, but it's also so highly processed that our body doesn't even know how to break it down. And the fact that Whole Foods puts this on their food is kind of scary. There's a lot of other ways that they could preserve their food. The fact is canola oil is cheap, and that's exactly why everyone uses it as much as they do. Rapeseeds are very, very common, whether they're organic, whether they're GMO, or whether they're just plain old random rapeseeds that are growing around. They're cheap and they're easy to make and they're easy to grow. So in that case, it's very, very inexpensive to process and get an oil out of them. So as much as we don't want to admit it, Whole Foods is definitely lining their pockets a little bit in this case. And honestly, I'll be the first person to say, I'm a business person, I get it. I understand profit margin, I understand what we have to do to make a buck. But there's better ways around it than to lie, than to negate the aspect that it's ever gonna be safe or not safe by saying that it's GMO or non-GMO. That's beside the point, and honestly, it's a deflection. They're trying to say that it's GMO or non-GMO, so that our mind is off of the fact that canola oil is a trans fat. It does have an effect on our heart, it does have an effect on our arteries, and it does have an effect on our liver. But most of all, it's having an effect on Whole Foods Pocketbook. So as always, if you have more ideas on future videos or you wanna learn more about canola oil or the whole omega-6, omega-3 profile, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.